I've developed a keen interest in HTML and CSS at a very, very, very early stage. And I was involved in office automation at uh, Optima for many years. And I've tried uh, many, many approaches to write documents, to maintain documents, to create help files, all this kind of stuff. And sometimes I was happy, most of the time I wasn't that happy, and sometimes I was very, very unhappy. Until so I came along Markdown. I have no idea how Markdown managed to escape my attention for a long time, because actually it was invented 2004 by John Gruber and with significant contributions by Aaron Swartz. And I took notice of it only a year ago, when I realized that I was using it actually without knowing. For example, when you use GitHub, there is an opportunity to write comments. There is an opportunity to add a wiki to your project. And you use a very simple markup language to add comments and stuff like that. And you probably don't know this or haven't noticed this, but this is Markdown, actually. And then I looked around and found that many other big boys are using this as well. But I should follow my, my slides. What exactly is Markdown? It's ordinary text, means you need notepad and nothing else, or an equivalent, nothing fancy. It has very, very simple markup rules that can be learned within half an hour or so. And it results in text that really is readable and maintainable. And it can be converted into valid HTML5 automatically. And the purpose of it is, it is a writing format rather than a publishing format. HTML is a publishing format. It's useful for all sorts of things. Simple readme files, editing pages on your website, writing emails, creating presentations. What you're looking at right now is called Presentable and is an APL program that takes mark uh, one single markdown file and converts it into this standalone HTML file which acts as a presentation without further ado. Of course, there's JavaScript embedded into the HTML, but there's nothing else needed, meaning when I move that HTML to you, you can see that presentation in exactly the same way we see it right now on the screen. You can use it to write an article on Vector. I'm actually going to show the difference. And since three months or so, Brian, you can create pages on my server, or in my server, rather, with Markdown. And you can write a book, even a cookbook as we have seen. The history is 2004, John Gruber came up with the idea, Aaron Swartz contri contributed significantly to the syntax, and unfortunately John Gruber then abandoned his brainchild and didn't take any notice of it anymore, other than complaining when somebody came up with the idea to add features or stuff like that. So from 2005 until 2012, it was pure chaos, meaning that there were many implementations and they were incompatible, <laughs> and there was a danger that things would diverge and Markdown would be forgotten very soon. When a guy came up with the idea to create a website which is called Common Mark and define a kind of standard, and that has evolved into all those important applications, to implement the features they hadn't, so now they have not subsets, they, they have many things implemented more than once and are getting more and more compatible. There are still specialized versions of APL, for example, for uh, usage in mathematics or stuff like that, but that doesn't hurt because they have certain additional requirements and there's nothing wrong with adding features for that. And since March 2016, we even have two RFCs, although they do not standardize Markdown, but they standardize the way uh, internet, um, um, not internet, browsers should deal with Markdown files. So the future is bright. Do we have competitors? Oh, yes, we have. 
we have ASCII-Doc and Textile and Creole and what, all sorts of things. Most of this stuff is used, at least optionally, in wikis as a way to create pages. Personally, I even think that some of them are better than Markdown because they have no inconsistencies and they are excellent. Uh, unfortunately, they are also um, quite complex, as usual. When something is very powerful, it's getting more complex. doesn't matter anymore because the wa war is over. The others are dead. It's just decided by, you know, everybody is going for Markdown. So whether you share the opinion it's the best choice or not, Markdown has won that war. And the big boys are all using it. <coughs> GitHub, Stack Overflow, SourceForge, OpenStreetMap, Reddit, Slack, Trello, Diaspora, and many, many, many others. And most wikis now op uh, offer it at least optionally as a possibility to edit pages. The smaller boys, as well. Uh, my server is already supporting it. Um, we will see in version 16 a new v user command, adoc user, and even in 15, if you um, implement, um, install it from a recent, very recent source, then it will come with three additional user commands called adoc browser, adoc help and something else, adoc list. This is a mistake in the in the list which I in the slide which I just realized. It's not a user command adoc underscore user, this is rubbish. And hopefully not next month, not anytime soon, but hopefully soon you will be able to edit on the APL wiki pages with Markdown. And then there is Markable. Markable is the APL solution to the problem how we convert the Markdown into HTML5. It's a dialog class. It converts one thing into the other and it is guaranteed to create valid HTML5, meaning when you put this into the validator of W3C, it will confirm, yes, that's okay. It's part of the Apple Tree project, meaning it is open source. Open source in the sense of the, the license model of the Apple Tree project is extremely free. It really means you can do what you want. You can even take it and sell it, although when I get knowledge of that, I wouldn't appreciate that. <laughs> but you may. And it's available for download from the APL wiki with the subdomain download. Why a dialog solution? There is already plenty of stuff available out there. In particular, Pandoc is quite common, but there are plenty of other implementations in all sorts of programming languages. Well, first of all, it's easier to integrate, naturally. Second, we can add features we are interested in. And indeed, Markable has a couple of features which make it it's outstanding. You can add, for example, a table of contents. You can embed function calls, meaning that an APL function is automatically executed and fed with certain parameters so you can manipulate your markdown page or rather the resulting HTML page. You get typographical sugar. What I mean by that, I will explain sh shortly. Um, I've invented a simplified way to create bookmark links. I will exp explain that in detail as well. And headers can be numbered. You might think there is no need to, to do this because CSS allows you to specify that headers should be numbered. But this is one of the things that just doesn't, don't work, in, in at least not uh, browser compatible. There are some browsers that are supporting it work quite well, but other browsers are a nightmare. And it's not Microsoft in this case. Edge is working well. And finally, you can define data within the markdown. Um, in a simplified syntax, you can specify key value pairs, which can be very useful. 
And finally, you can use the LAMP symbol to comment a line in your markdown and it will not make an appearance in the HTML5. <coughs> and of course, there's one last reason. There is a converter in every other programming language. I hated to see stuff like, look at this. This is so great. And we talk about APL and in the corner it says, proudly driven by PHP. Examples. Where do we use this? Well, this slideshow I already explained is based on, on Markdown. I don't want to go into the details. The first detailed example I want to show you is a readme file, which is for a readme file relatively complex. It's still a very simple one, but relatively complex. That's how it looks like. Just to give you an idea, I don't expect you to read this, of course, <laughs> just to give you an idea. Keep in mind that the way it looks like is completely dependent on the CSS, so you can change that completely. That has nothing to do with our goal to discuss Markdown. This is just the default CSS the Markable class comes with. And please also notice that this thing has mm. a table of contents, which is automatically generated just by setting a flag from the headers, as you would expect. Now, when you look at the HTML5, <coughs> that's the way that looks. I don't increase the font size because there's no point in reading it. I just want to ask you whether you would be prepared to edit that if <coughs> needs must be. That is not enjoyable, is it? And the likelihood of you breaking something by accidentally removing a lower then or, well, you know what I mean. Everybody in this room probably has edited HTML in one occasion or another, and it's not exactly nice. Exactly the same thing in Markdown looks this way. And keep in mind, that can easily be transferred to the other one. If you are not immediately attracted by that, Something is wrong with you. <laughs> One more example. This is an article written by Drew, Table Diff. It's published on the Vector website. This is the way it looks like. Again, Please uh, don't attempt to read it, just get an impression of how it looks like. As you can see, it's not a very long and it is not a very complex article, but it is not a very simple one either. It needs some effort in terms of marking up and making it look properly. And of course we have APL code included and all this kind of, th of things. In order to make that appear on the APL at the Vector website, the editor, poor Jake, has to make an effort. He has to convert that into HTML. And that is much worse than the example I've just shown to you. That's the way that looks like. All this is written manually. I think in Drew's in case it is, was you, not Jake, right? That was before Jake took over. But it doesn't matter. Somebody has to write that code manually to make it appear, because there, are, there is no help. And usually the authors of vector articles deliver either a simple text file or a Word document. There are few exceptions who deliver HTML, but that doesn't help at all, <coughs> because the HTML required by the vector side is actually XHTML when it's required. It has very special requirements, otherwise it wouldn't generate an HTML page from it. So when it comes as an HTML page, you have even more work to do in order to find out what's okay and what isn't. Now these days, Jake is not converting whatever the author delivers into HTML. Instead, he rewrites it in Markdown. 
And the same article in Markdown looks like this. And again, you can see it's just amazing, isn't it? When you look at details like, for example, the footnotes, that is a footnote. That ID1 is somewhere mentioned earlier on in the text and it generates automatically the links which allow you to click at it and end up at the footnote and you can follow the links and stuff like that. It's just amazing. And one more example, the user command I was already talking about. I have given a talk on this years ago. ADOC stands for Automatic Document Generation. It takes a class or a group of class classes and uh, analyzes it and documents a public interface. But there's more to this. If you want to, you can add documentation to it. I invented this in 2005, one year after Mr. Gruber. And I missed <coughs> an opportunity to become rich and famous because I didn't realize that this was a general idea that is very valuable. I was just focused on documenting APL classes. So what I did was I invented something which was pretty much the same as Markdown, with very, very few exceptions, which is the reason why I changed the format between 4.0 and 5.0 from my format to Markdown, and it was very little effort. I have the class in the workspace, so we can look at it. And one difference was, for example, that I used equal symbols rather than pound symbols, while uh, numbered lists started with a pound symbol rather than with a digit followed by a dot. And I think that was pretty much how APL code and blocks of code uh, were uh, marked up. That was different as well. That was pretty much else, uh, all. Uh, everything else was the same. Now, all this is the way a doc documents itself, so to speak. So when I call the user command adoc help, what it does is it uses the user command browse and provides this argument adoc itself. So we see adoc's own user command popping up in the browser. And by the way, if you would ride into an APL interpreter running on another machine, then it would use the ride browser to pop that up because you don't want that to pop up on the machine where the dialog APL session is, is running. That wouldn't be very helpful. Would you please repeat that kind of difference? If you on the ride if you ride from my Windows box into a Linux box over there and you execute in the ride session square bracket a doc underscore browse class name then by default, the default browser pops up and shows the help. But that would be that Linux box. You don't want that. It might be the server. There might be no browser at all. In that particular case, ADOC realizes I'm running under write and uses the into write built browser to show the help on your machine rather than over there. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> the question was what I said. <laughs> <laughs> the question was, please repeat. <laughs> I would like to show you how to use Markable. Uh, the first step is to download it from the APL wiki, naturally. It's just needs one namespace script called Apple Tree Utils. Everything needs <laughs> Apple Tree Utils, so that's the first thing to download. The second one is Markable, and then you are done. I have prepared a workspace where everything I need is uh, already available, so we just load that. And just to clarify what the settings are, <coughs> and I create a variable with a little bit of markdown. This is just a header and a bulleted list and another header. Please note that the two headers have the same... I shouldn't have done this. Oh dear. Oh dear. I don't like the diamond. I never did, but it's helpful here. <laughs> 
So first, I created a variable md markdown, and then I called a method markdown to HTML and provided the variable the right argument, and I get a result, uh, which is a two-item vector. The first one is the HTML created, and the second one is a namespace. Now, in the namespace, the most important thing, after having done something, is the variable report, which repeats what we've already seen in the session anyway. It might also contain uh, error messages. There are situations when I'm able to figure out that something uh, was wrong. In general, by the way, Markable is not uh, expected to break. It should always create a page and something to look at. Always, always. It might not be what you are after if you specify nonsense, but it should create something. The principle is garbage in, garbage out. If you feed it with some stupid stuff, you get nonsense back. And the HTML thing is just a snippet, not a full page, as you would expect. Instead of accepting those defaults, I can create what I call a parameter space, which is why I call the result of the function create palms, uh, well, palms. Palms has a method, a built-in method, which is called del list. This ingenious expression comes from Phil Last. It's on, on one of my function key, and what it does is it creates a window and shows the result of the function without creating a variable or leaving a thread behind or anything, any trace of anything in the workspace. Everything disappears, except that I have a window where I can scroll. It's a wonderful expression, it's so useful. I don't want to go into the details because I don't have time anymore, but you can imagine that there are many parameters that you can set. One example would be to define a different set of CSS files to change the outlook completely, if you wish so. I want to suppress the message in the session. I want to have a full HTML page rather than just a snippet. And I do it again. And we look at the HTML again, and that's the way it looks like. Now, when you look at the lift, you can see that the page is large. This is not because the HTML is so, so complex, because it's not. It's because the CSF stuff is quite big. So it's probably a better idea to take advantage of the wonderful regular expressions. This expression just gets rid of the whole style thing, and that's uh, the CSS, and we end up with a pure HTML, which is 20 lines. The under hundreds of lines was CSS. Report is still the same. And that is because the names of the two headers were the same. And in Markable, every header gets automatically assigned an anchor. So you, I need this, otherwise I can't create the table of contents. But I need, of course, names that are different for every single header. And if I investigate and find out that two headers share the same name, something I can't deal with, then I add a number to to the second one, and third one, and fourth one, on, and so on. So I can differentiate between the two. That brings up the Explorer window, and we are looking at a markdown file, which documents the Markable class itself. And as you can see, ignore the value error. As you can see, there is no HTML file at the moment. Now I'm creating one by first setting a variable to the file name of the markdown and then call another method. Sorry, no. First we create the parameters, populate it with a title, tell it that we want a table of contents, but the table of contents shouldn't carry the first level because the first level is no point in having in, in the table of contents. That's the name of the document but I'm interested in two, three, and four. I don't want to have five and six because the table of contents potentially would get very large and overcrowded. 
and I want to get the headers numbered. We already discussed verbose, and there is another method called convert markdown file that creates surprise a markdown file an HTML file. And that is Markable's own documentation converted from Markdown into HTML5. And as you can see, the headers are numbered. The table of contents starts with 1-1 one, one rather than with 1, and you will never see more than four levels. However, Markable has also the concept of sub-table of contents. Let us go to the end and then go a little bit up. This is a sub table of contents. It means that for larger topics, I'm capable of inserting a dedicated table of contents which lists just, in this case, uh, the different variables you will find in that NS namespace returned by the method. Yeah, this is the wrong version. It's a problem I've already fixed. But I think I'm running out of time anyway, right? Two minutes. I stop because I'm almost done anyway. I would like to ask you whether you have any questions. Well, obviously I have answered all questions. Aaron. So I've used Markdown a lot, but one of the things that I've, r there are two, three, six, a few problems that I've run into. One of them is um, the scalability of the notation for maintaining readability in text form and getting complex output. Um, navigation has been another one. It seems like with the auto generation of table of contents, you fix that a little bit. Uh, y you've got auto indexing. But do you have some of these other sort of, you're using Markdown to like do whole books and it, I've always struggled to use Markdown for anything that required nonlinear features or very complex layouts that I, I, I considered publishing features that were important like indexing keywords, um, navigational anchors that are auto-generated um, sort of in the style of like Douglas Engelbart's hierarchical menu views and patterns and things like that. Do you have solutions for any of this or? There is the uh, feature built in that all the headers get automatically an anchor. So you can link, it's not only usable in the table of contents, you can also link to them within the text. We can see actually an example. But, but you, yours gave a warning because they had the same names. Yes, but I convert the anchor by adding a name, um, a number. Are, th are the names predictable? Because yes. Okay. Precisely. And can this you can you address individual objects beyond headers, like paragraphs, sentences, and uh, other yes, objects? Yes, like you that? can. There okay. is a concept of special attributes, which was introduced by Markdown Extra and is now becoming a standard, which means that when you add curly brackets to the end of a paragraph, you are able to specify hash <coughs> dot or style or stuff like that, meaning that you assign either an, an, an ID or a class name or CSS stuff and stuff like that. It's a simplified syntax for that. Okay, what about diagrams and tables? I saw some table examples there, but can they, it seems kind of simple. What, do you have any examples of some well, complex layouts? I think they allow you a lot, actually. That is a table. And what you can achieve is you can align the columns. This is standard markdown. So you can align the columns. Uh, you can have a first header or not in markable, which you can't in standard markdown. You must have a header, which is sometimes an annoyance. Uh, for example, at the oh, not in this one, sorry. Uh, sometimes you don't want this. So th there are many opportunities, and because you can assign an ID or even style, you can make the uh, t a table look very differently according to your needs. Ah, I forgot to mention the typographical sugar, 
which is a non-standard markdown feature. When you use double quotes, for example, it's converted automatically into the typographical uh, equivalent. And when you add uh, hyphen, 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 it's converted into an M dash, and hyphen, hyphen is converted into an N dash, and in uh, parentheses, uh, C is getting copyright and all sorts of things. Okay, I just want to make two comments about uh, Markdown or Mark APL or Markopole support in my server. One is we've created a widget that basically allows you to identify Markdown content in any of your live pages, and then we use Kai's uh, Markopole to convert that. And then just looking at the presentation here, we'll add support for files that have a .md extension and convert those automatically, and that'll be in later today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if I may, one last remark. Ideas. What is in the pipeline is um, Markdown to HTML is an application that is almost ready and will allow you to convert uh, Markdown into HTML by several means. One example is you drag and drop a file on it. The other one is you have direct input, you type something. Another one is uh, to specify a file name uh, to a user command, which is using exactly the same application. And the third one is it is running as a Windows <coughs> service, looking into a directory. If an MD file pops up, it creates an HTML file in the same directory, and you are done. You can add even other folders to it, and it will check whether an MD file got changed. If so, it creates a new HTML file from that. The other one is HTML to Markdown is an interesting thing because you have HTML files and you would like to have Markdown from them. So how to convert them? This is not ready yet, but I'm working on that. And I'm dreaming of a Markdown editor, but I haven't even started thinking about the features. That's it. Thank you very much.